You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Goes by the name of Common. Yep. Yo, peace morning, to the, sir. Peace to the guys in the earth. What's up? Peace, peace, my brother. Good hey. morning. Got a new album coming out this uh, week. Well, this Friday. Yes, sir. Black America again. Black America what, again. What exactly is Black America again? I know that's the title of your album, but it seems like yeah. it's some type of movement. It is. It's really a movement. It's like a, it's a call to action. Uh, I called it Black America again because, of, you know, all the injustices, the in, inequality and the marginalizing of, of black people. We've been seeing that over and over since we've been in this country, that's how America treated us. But I'm also saying, again, because we writing a new story and it's up for us as black people and all people to support that new story, which is like just showing who we are as black people and showing the joy, the love, the creativity, which we always do. But I mean, it's just time for us to highlight that and just put that out there. So like what we is have the to new care story? about each other. Yeah, this is definitely the case. The new story is, is about God first, activating that light within us, like just putting that light, like just letting us know that, man, that light is in us. Each and every one of us got it. And then also looking at each other with love, like, man, no matter where we coming from, we, we got to love each other. So for me, the new story is about the, and it's about just the what we express as artists and mm. just as people, you know, like you got artists that, that we, as black people, we do jazz, we do blues, we do soul, we do hip hop, we do rock, we, you know, we architects, um, you know, we, um, talented visual artists and directors. So for me, it's just about the black expression too. I like what you said to embrace God and then embrace what's inside of you. Like I feel like how they always say white privilege. I feel like it's a privilege to be black too. Man, it's- Embrace it's, to activate that black privilege. Yeah, right? activate that black privilege and that black magnificence. It's, to me, it's like, man, we we blessed to be black. I'll be thanking God yes. that we black. Right. Like and, and that go for my brown people too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's just like, just people of color, we gotta celebrate who we are. That's what- Black America again is celebrating who we are, and it's talking about from from the from not only the protests and the, and us overcoming, but like I said, the joy, the love is really just God music. And that, you've been very active in getting people to sign up and register to vote, and encouraging people to vote. And the election is next week. Yeah. Does anything make you nervous about this election? Well, I mean, I, the things that make not nervous, but the things I'm just being aware of is like, look, it's obvious that um, Hillary Clinton is the best candidate to be president right now it's just about for me and us just holding her accountable for the things that she says that she's going to do like we should hold all politicians accountable like local state level you know like we got to hold them all accountable and and that means like showing up if she ain't doing something we got to we got to stand on that and, and let her know like but I, I'm, I'm gonna try to have faith in in the fact that she's going to try to do some things because you know, obviously the mass incarceration was one thing that a lot of people were concerned with. And, Absolutely. you know, she acknowledged that that, that was a, a misstep and it wasn't her particularly, but she supported it and was talking that super predator stuff. Right. But um, hopefully she trying to clear that up. We all we all grow. Right. You, you think there's a chance that she might not win, though? I mean, when you said scary, that's the scary part. The scary scariest thing is that it's people in America that really I supported Donald Trump right. like that many people. A lot of people, that's like crazy. that. Surprisingly, that is like that's the thing. Is like, but you know what? This had to be brought up to the surface. To be honest, we we had to see who's who so we can get to the healing that we're talking about. Because even when we're talking about like black culture, it has to be all different nationalities right. respecting that, you know. And then as we respect their culture, so all these, you know, all these racist people r rising up. We see who you are. We got to move you out, like however that that need to be done. Like I've seen you on the front lines too heavy. I, I seen you in, in uh, we were in uh, Southside Jamaica Queens. Yeah, you brought the the CEO of Starbucks yeah. to Southside Jamaica Queens. You would yeah. look like you know the CEO of Starbucks. <laughs> now, now, how do you know? <laughs> you probably the got CEO a lifetime membership card. Of Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, well that's you know. That's talk about that initiative that, that you was out there. Yeah, doing. that's my guy, um, Howard Schultz. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know he reached out to me like when John and I was doing the whole Oscar campaigning and stuff, and he was like, man, I like what you're doing. So we just started building a, a real friendship, and it was like, I saw that he was serious about wanting to do stuff in the community. So I would sit there. Other than build Starbucks. Other than build Starbucks, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> he wanted, And even within that, he was trying to do some things like, 
But I was, I just, for me, I would be like, man, look, this is what we need. We need jobs out there. We need opportunities. We got to go in the community and, and do whatever things that I was aware of. Right. I'm like, this is what we're trying to do. Like, we went out, he, he and I, we, we set up this thing called 100,000 Job Initiative. So we started in Chicago, but it's all around the country. Man, I, I've been seeing youngins getting jobs, man. It, I, I was out in the hood in, in Chicago in Inglewood. These two girls walked up to me like, man, Common, we coming from where you, from our job we got when we went to your 100,000 oh, job. And this to, that, that, that touched me. I was like, right. this thing is being effective. So for me, it was about connecting with him on a level, like, because he's sincere and he true about it, just just speaking the truth to him. How did you meet him? Like, where were you where you met the C? He said he out to him. <laughs> no, 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 he, he hit me and was like, let's, <laughs> let's have dinner. He you out the blue, just he, what up, yeah, yeah, his per actually, his person hit me and then he was like, yo, how I want to meet with you. And, and then um, I went and had dinner with him and then from there. You make it sound so easy. Doesn't he? Uh, like, that's not the CEO of Starbucks. I know, I ain't gonna front, I was kind of <laughs> like that. But let's keep it real, this yo, is common. Yo, yeah, and I'm he, sure the CEO of Starbucks is like, okay, that is the perfect person for him to te try to team up with to do some of these initiatives. Well, you know, we control the culture he? of cool. Right. So yeah, regardless yeah. of how rich they are, what they do, they still want to be with the cool people. Absolutely. Yeah, but my thing was like about having somebody that, you know, you could tell when, when companies just want to, like they just want to take advantage. And I didn't feel like mm -hmm. it was coming mm -hmm. from that place. That's right. why I was like, cool, I'm, I'm going to sit here and build with you and see what we really could do. He didn't have me out, you know, I didn't been out to his crib. Like one of the reasons I was doing Black America again like at that queen spot is because I was kicking that rhyme to him at his crib like in, in the Hamptons. I was right. like, check this out. And he was he was feeling it. So he was, I was, he was like, man, you got to do that at the at the Starbucks thing. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what if somebody was a Donald Trump supporter, but they were a director for your dream role in a movie? Does that get in the way of you deciding to do something, work with somebody based on their politics or things you don't agree with? Or is it strictly business? No, nah, I mean, it does get in the way because at this point for me, I want to be around energy that I want to be around, you know, and the type of people I want to be around. It's not just like, oh, I got this project or I'm getting this. It's about like, man, this is my life. I want to spend my life with people that I feel at least going to do their best to bring the best energy. And if you're a Trump supporter, I ain't just going to judge you and say you just bogus, but I'm going to try to figure out like what, what's on your what's on your mind. To be to yeah, you what's know, going on? I was having conversations with some Trump supporters because, you know, people automatically assume that it's racists and bigots who support yeah. Trump. But it's some people who just don't like the government and just don't like politics. So they like the fact that he's a radical and he's not a politician. And yeah. just don't like Hillary. Yeah, that's yeah. part of it, too. But I, but my thing is, even with that, even with his radicalism or whatever, it's just not, it don't sound like, it, it doesn't connect to being a leader. Like, he's not really a true leader that can lead a country. So even if you like, man, I don't like politics, don't just take this dude. This dude ain't got, he ain't, he ain't shown anything that shows he has the, 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 the ability to be a president. Yeah, man. to bring, bring the nation together. Right. To bring the nation yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's, my thing is like, man, I, I understand people like, oh, I really don't understand, but people feeling like, well, you know, Obama was, you know, a lot of these people coming up with this racist stuff because they was fed up with Obama just seeing mm -hmm. a black man doing what he doing and mm -hmm. standing the way he, he stood up. But it's like, man, are you gonna just do, just being a racist, are you just gonna vote for somebody that, that's in, inadequate to be president? That, that don't make sense, you know? I just don't. I just don't ride with it. I was talking to my uh, homegirl Simone. She used to work on Bernie Sanders campaign. She was telling me that young black millennials are not interested in the voting process this year. Like it's the lowest it's ever been. If you had to tell them something, man. What you my thing is like, at the end of the day, all the stuff that that you protest for as young black millennials, all the things that you stand up and see the injustices going on with with young black people and brown people. If you don't vote, you contribute into that injustice. Like you, you saying, man, you know what? I I don't care because I don't care about these these actual candidates. So I'm not gonna do anything. Well, if you allow anything to happen, you allow a, a president. Well, now I ain't gonna say a president. You allow somebody like Trump to get into a presidential space, and it's gonna be worse than ever. So we gotta we gotta move things. Everything ain't gonna move like immediately. Some things just take ch take time to change. You know, and that's what I always been like. Okay. Well, I ain't gonna say always, but I understand now that it's gonna take some time to, to change some of the things that we wanna change. And did you consciously say, let me put out Black America again right before the election? Yeah, I was, cause I, I wrote it like back in, in March and was and I was rapping in different places and churches and different things and, you know, but I, I knew, actually I was talking with Ava DuVernay who who, who directed them. 13. Yeah, the 13th, yeah. the 13th was strong, man. Fire. Um, 
and we and she was like, man, this is man, it's powerful. You got this this music coming election year. You should put it out around that time. And it just honestly kind of worked out. You know, I had to get everything together and get everything organized, and it did. It was strategic at that point to be like, look, this needs to come out around the election time. Now, what's Love Start? Your hashtag Love Start. I see you yeah. using that a lot. Yeah, I use that. I mean, the Love Start is a song I did on the album. It was me and Marsha Ambrosius and this girl PJ. Very dope. And, uh, you know, it's just another way of calling it. It's another term of affection to, to your girl or something. Like, that's my love star right there. So I just, it's just you a song. You wrote it for Regina Hall? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, Regina, that's just my people. That's just my, my oh. buddy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you guys broke up already? Nah, nah, we okay. never was like, we never was uh in that in that space. You know, that's just like somebody I care about as a friend. We work together. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm right now I'm just single, so. You uh, saw it on the blogs, though. I know, I saw y'all it. Met it. <laughs> y'all met at Barbershop 3. One week and broke up on the blogs the next week. I know, I seen no, it. No, they didn't break up on the blog yet, but he did say he's single, so yeah. maybe they just never. Yeah, it was just like, you know, point blank, just friends. She funny. Uh, uh, she's super cool, beautiful. She did come up here and say she had a, a man, though. Oh, yeah? She was, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. Like, she probably <laughs> does. <laughs> she probably does, but, uh, you know, that's my buddy, and I'm single, so, you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Carmen. Did you have to let her know M- like that? On no. the breakfast club? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. I think it's linked to everybody, boy. I, saw, oh, I remember you were linked to Laura Dern at one point, and then yeah. you were like, look, we just worked on something together. We went to dinner. You can't even go to dinner. He's having I mean, a good time out here. Yeah, man. I mean, let me tell you, like, Laura Dern is, is actually an actress that I worked with in a movie. Mm-hmm. And she she and I was in the same acting class, too. So, um, and I've known her for a while. So, friends, you know, you go, you... Look, at certain points when you're working with people, you're going to go out, you hang out with them. You know, it don't necessarily mean you with them. Mm. Charlamagne, French Montana Common, which one you rather be? Because, you know, we talk about French Montana Common being linked to all these beautiful women. Which one? Which nah, one? Charlamagne, I got a good, I got a nice, nice um, group of women that I've that I, Oh yeah, you got a great state. I got a, a great a credit, yeah, credit, credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I'd rather be Common because Common more discreet with it. Mm. Yeah. You Thank don't have you, the man. reputation as a hoe. Yeah. Damn, that's a good, good <laughs> answer. Like a, that's a good answer. He's like a like gluten-free hoe. Like <laughs> vegan, <laughs> vegan hoe. Like, is that, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he says sweet things hey. like love star. And yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. look, this is the thing you would have to, this is the thing you could ask any ex, to, any of my exes, we still cool. It's all, it's still love. You know what I'm saying? I talk to them mm-hmm. and they, it's always love, whether it's Serena, Erica, um, Taraji. See, that's the thing. You got more classics than French. French only got one classic under his belt. That's the not. You just named three classics, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like three classics that men have <laughs> sat around and been like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. That's, those are the ones. But do you text after you see Serena dance with Beyonce? Do you just text and be like, hey, big head? <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell her she looked good. I was like, like yo, you, you snapped in that. <laughs> right. yeah. I got to look up this Rihanna quote for Common, though, that she said. Rihanna said something about Common, too? No. Oh. But I think it might be relevant. You guys keep on talking. Now, now and I love that you got on Solange's um, Cranes in the Sky, by the oh, way. Yeah. That song is a beautiful song, inspiring. Yeah. I, I was like, wow. I love that song. So I just did an unofficial remix to it like, because I was just inspired, man. That, I think she did some really great music. And uh, when I heard that song, I was like, man, this sounds like something I... I just started rhyming on it, and I was like, "Man, I'm just gonna lay a verse." Are you shocked that all this black consciousness is just rising at one good at one time? I mean, I'm I'm actually like happy and inspired by it because mm-hmm. I, it's just showing that we speak, we do care, and we speak up for ourselves, and like we are aware. You know, a lot of times we've been stereotyped as like, "Ah, oh, man, hip hop don't really hip hop is this," and you know, at certain times it's, it, it becomes imbalanced. Yeah, but as you see, no matter who it is. People speak up. I just did uh, for Black America again. I just did a remix with Pusha, Pusha T, Gucci Mane, and uh, and BJ the Chicago Kid. Okay. And I felt it was like, man, Black America is coming from everywhere. It ain't just right. coming from just the, the the people that we label as conscious. It's like coming from Gucci. It's coming from you know um, Chance. It's coming from all these these cats. Like we care. Mm-hmm. So I I'm, I love that the Black consciousness is is aware and out there right now. Are you happy rappers are rapping again? Like you oh, start man. to see the, the lyrical content back in the music. Dude, that's what that's what got me. That's what got me geek to to get in and like just do some music. Like it was I'm like, man, you got people out there like Kendrick and and I love Chance and and Ye still be doing his thing. It's like, man, I'll be like, man, people out there rhyming. And and Dre Dre 3000 to give you a verse that you like 
damn, I got to, you know, step up. And that's the stuff that always inspired me. Plus, I be going to stuff like ta Coates' book. It's called Between the Between World. The world and, yeah, that like, Dope. yeah, Hamilton. And seeing different things that just inspired me as an artist to be like, I could be high, I could be a better writer. I want to be, I want my rhymes to be around like, like when we look back at James Baldwin or, mm-hmm. you know, Langston Hughes or some of the speeches by Malcolm X, I'm like, I want my rhymes to be there. Right. Hey, you're producing a show about 90s rappers going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever went through that? Oh uh, man, yeah, for sure. I've been through some times where I'm like, man, where, you know, like where do I fit in? Because yeah, there was one time when, when around the, it was the Koofy time when- <laughs> I was about to had him going crazy. <laughs> I, I was confused at that time. <laughs> man, I, but you know, for me, Electric I was just- Electric Circus. Yeah, I, yeah, for me, yeah, you always reference that way. You always do that. Every always, time it comes <laughs> look, up, he's like, look, right, look, 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 always look. But hey, but you know what I can say about that? If if that's the one that Charlemagne bring up, then I'm good, because I got a, a stack of work. Yeah, I got, you know, so, so, and you know, every piece is not gonna always get to people, but, but my thing is like, as a person, mm-hmm. you gotta evolve the way you evolve. Like you gotta grow into the things. And sometimes you go look back. I can look back and laugh at some of the pictures that you know, right. the, the way I was dressing we and stuff. All can. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's still you know, it's still like man, this is who I was. I right. still embrace it. I still stand behind Electric Circus like I do B or like I will with Black America again because that's who that's who I was at that time. Mm-hmm. I always say it's easier for guys like you to evolve in hip hop though because you never claim to be the street rappers. The street rappers are the ones you see going through the midlife crisis. Yeah. Because they still got the hoodies on at 45, still ice yeah. grilling, still mean mugging. Like, you, you're an adult. You've been yeah. carrying yourself like an adult. Yeah, I think that, man, I think um, that's, like, sometimes you can get stuck in, in the thing, like, when you, like, first come out and you say, oh, this is who I am. And if you don't show that true evolution, you, like, you start saying, all right, I'm going to make this music because people already like me doing that instead of just going where you go with it. Um, the artists that I've seen evolved, they evolved like as human beings, like, and then you see that coming out through their music. So me, I was always like, okay, well now I'm talking about God and, and Islam and, and this, I'm gonna talk about it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking about love, I'm, this, I'm gonna talk about it. no matter how ridiculed I get or, or you know what people think of it, I just felt like I needed to stand in my presence and stand in, in who I'm in my truth. And that's just basically, you know, to me that, can help build a career. You know, you gotta have talent, you gotta have faith in all the other things that align with it, but if you stand in, your, in where you truly are, I think you can evolve and grow and be that artist that has a career. We were just talking about Jay-Z's evolution for Halloween because we saw him dressed as a Ken doll. Yeah. And, um, and people clowning him, like, yo, he's a 46-year-old man with his wife and kid. You're gonna do whatever your daughter wants you to be, yep. Yeah, man, I mean, look, like, when you grow up and be an uh, adult, you do the things that you want to do, like, and you, you got kids, you got a family. You you're not living for, for the millions of fans that just say, "Man, you should do this." Not in your personal life. Right. You make art and music for for the fans, but man, how you treat your your family and what and the way you conduct yourself mm-hmm. with your family is your business. If it get out there, it's cool. That's why for me, like, when it comes to like social media, I'm not doing social media. I do social media like to, to talk about things that I'm doing in music and in art. My personal life ain't gonna really be all over social media because I'm not trying to put my personal life for people to judge or to to like it or whatever. This is this is this is me. This is how I live. I don't need your approval, you know, for for what I do with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? So I, I respect. I love what Jay Z doing. He's just being a grown man. So you didn't dress up for Halloween? Man, I wanted to. I missed it because I was just coming back. I was filming this movie, John Wick, John Wick Two. Mm-hmm. So so it was like. I came back, I was kind of like, man, we was in like some real fight scenes, so I was a little tired. I got a costume, I mean, my team had got me a costume, Lauren and on, but well, then- What got you, the, a celery stick or something? What, 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 did, what did y'all give me? It, it was a dog costume. It was a little a dog. dog. <laughs> it was a dog. It was a Snapchat filter? Yeah, I was just looking at that's dogs. Why I did, that's why I did. Yeah, 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 come on. <laughs> what kind of dog would I you got, think? I would have got. <laughs> it was some little puppy dog. I couldn't, I couldn't rock that. I couldn't rock that. It was a Snapchat filter. You didn't see the Snapchat yeah, 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 filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nah, nah, they nah, can't do you nah, like nah, that. Nah, that's why I ain't. Now you spent a lot of time in the White House doing a lot of positive things. And the black community, a lot of the black community, are not too happy with Barack Obama. They feel like he really didn't hold down his community. What What are your thoughts on Barack Obama and how he did in the eight years? Man, I feel the I feel that the president came in with the with the intention to do a lot of great things for the for the community, mm-hmm. for for black people, um, and and I feel like he hit a lot of walls 
dealing with the politics that's there within Congress and all. I don't think he was even knew that it was going to be that much resistance because people, you know, was like, Barack, Everything you want Barack. to do, we're going to shut it down. Yeah. The Republicans. The Republicans like, shut it. Anything pass. Yeah, so I think he was there. I think he might, at some point, might have got tired. At some points, he had to probably deal with politics the way it goes, but mm-hmm. I always felt his intention in his heart was to help black people, and he's still doing it. He had a meeting. He had a meeting for My Brother's Keeper, which is his initiative mm-hmm. that's helping out young black people. It was me, Rick Ross, ASAP Rocky, Alicia Keys, Chance the Rapper, Nicki Minaj, all sitting in the White House talking about, like, prison reform, talking about, like, Cats was, like, talking real stuff in there. He sat with us for, like, four hours. He said with no Secret Service, no nothing. And Rick Ross' uh, ankle brace kept going on. Yeah, it did go off. It went off. <laughs> oh, yeah, the president was like, he's like, what's that? And then and Rick Ross just came out like that's my bracelet, you know, like and then the president was like, Man, you really keeping it real, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh he and he and he was like, Man, I need to know because you know, you never know what's going on yeah, when you hear these things. Yeah, what's this beeping noise like? So no. Okay. You know, I was just saying, so it's it's you could tell he's in tune and really does care. So I think his presidency if you look at him if at what he's done just symbolically too. Man, he's changed the world, man. Not any kid feel like they could at least be president. They, they, at least, mm-hmm. they know that they could be president. Like, so I think, you know, that in itself is already a change in the world. That's what I feel like Hillary's presidency will do, too, because I think about my daughter. My daughter's eight. Yeah. So all she's seen is Barack. Now yeah. she sees Hillary. She yeah. don't even know that standard of an old white man yeah, in authority. That's what I love. I mean, you know, I, I feel like, man, it'd be great to see a woman rule, you know, and be the, the head of the state. Like, I think things would be better, and, and we need that energy, and, and we do want our daughters to see that. Like. Absolutely. Now, with the show, it's called 93 Tell Infinity? Yeah, right what? now, that's the working title. Why Why a far side title? That's well, Souls of Mischief. Uh, Souls of Mischief, yeah, my Mischief. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we kind of, the writer started basing the show on something like a lot of 90s hip-hop, because, like, the artists, you know, the people, that, the artists, 40-year-old rapper and... Uh, and the, the guy, the white guy, that's the two leads, they grew up in the 90, loving 90s hip hop. So they kind of, it's kind of like symbolic to like how 90s hip hop is still they like music. Like, cause he, part of it's just like he, he was saying how he goes to weddings and now like scenario it's is, a, cool. is the old school and yeah. it's, it's on like that everybody school. dancing yeah, that right. dancing like, oh, to. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's why it's 93 Till. That's a shot of ginger you got, man? Yeah, I got me a little ginger. Oh, that was some THC or something. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I got that ginger. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm be coming to y'all's spot, though. Yeah, come on, come on to the spot. Yeah, for I real. I do a ginger shot to my uh, wheatgrass every day. See, wheatgrass, it always... Goes right through you? It messed my stomach up a little bit sometimes. I mean, you had to poo, right? It come right yeah. out fast. It's good, though. It come it's out good. fast sometimes. <laughs> yeah, shot, man. I'm about to get that. Go ahead, let's see. <laughs> there you go. Ginger's good for your voice, too. Now let's talk about this new album, this new project you got. Mm-hmm. Tell us about this album a little bit. Black America again. Yeah, so this album is like it's God music, it's social political music. It's about it has love in it. It has um to me it's it's about the artistic expression of of black people and um and I say black people because obviously I'm one voice of it, but I got Stevie Wonder on there, I got John Legend, um Sid from the internet, um BJ the Chicago kid, Bilal. And it's every, and all these musicians, Kareem Riggins and Robert Glasper and all these musicians that come from jazz and different eclectic things, bringing it together and just making it like just some pure music. And I brought artists, like this artist named Lorna Simpson did my album cover. And I had these different directors from Ava DuVernay, Casey Lemons who did Eve's Bayou, and uh, Malcolm Lee who did Best Man and, and Barbershop. Um, they all did like short films to the to the project. So I just wanted to, I wanted it to be like a, a hub for black art and expression, right. you know? Hey, you're a supporter of Prop 64 too, right? Um, no, no. Not really? What what is what the, the weed the weed the weed? Yes, I am. I don't I didn't <laughs> 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 for yeah. recreational or just because of the criminalization? No, because of the criminalization. Okay. I I mean, for me, it was about um it's about like the fact that so many black men and brown men have been put in jail for weed for for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, shoot, legalize it, I mean, at the end of the day, so that won't be happening. And my my whole thing is mass incarceration has really been, it's the new slavery, we know that, Absolutely. but but we just, like, got to figure ways to get get through that now at this point. The scariest thing about that documentary, 13, was when Van Jones said, we've seen slavery and segregation, mass incarceration, what's next? 
I know, yeah. You know it's something next. You know it's something next, and uh, you know, when I looked at the, when I looked at Thirteenth, I was like, I was like, man, the way she connected the story and the dots for us to understand, like, okay, after slavery, they said, okay, we got a, we got Jim Crow. That's the way to hold black people into a second class citizenship. Then after that, it was like, oh, we're gonna find, we got, we can't say out there we can't like say um colored only bathrooms so let's figure out another way and then it then came mass incarceration because the war on drugs and all that the war on drugs when when reagan was talking all that war on drugs it wasn't it wasn't even a heavy drug problem yet that was mm -hmm. pre-crack when they started the war on drugs and even nixon and all them was talking all the that talk law and order that was just a way to to, to deem us as criminals and then be like okay we're gonna put them in jail and that's, then they get free labor. Then the prison system is like privatized, so so the now it's a big business. And that's documented. Like, I forgot who it was. He said the, the war on drugs was the war on black and brown. Like black and brown. The CIA said that. Yeah, I mean that's what when you see Newt Gring Newt Gingrich in a uh, Newt Gingrich. How you say his name? Newt Gingrich. Whatever. Newt yeah. Gingrich. Yeah. When you seen him like really saying that, yo, the mass incarceration in the criminal system was targeted towards black people. So as black people, that's when you knew you was like, damn, this, right. this is for real. But I wrote a song for that for that um, movie too. It's at the end of the movie, the end title song called "Letter to the Free." It's on the album mm -hmm. too. And then you also have the Common Ground Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we definitely we strong with in in Chicago. Like we've been real strong with our with our young people. Just um, as far as just giving them opportunities and helping them develop them. As far as academically, just helping them to see like, okay, I I could dream about that. I could be a chef. I could be, um, I, I need to know what nutrition is. I need to know like what yoga is just to be exposed to different things to, and and also like different professions. Like we, we have them work as part of our festival, this our festival that we have every year. They like do, they learn what sound engineering is and like lighting engineering. So it's about exposing them and just being there for them. Like we see them through from 14 to 18. We just had our first graduating class. Some of the, one of the youngest, go to Morehouse and we I just saw him and they they still doing it man so like we we doing it with the youth there and obviously y'all know Chicago got some things that we got to work on so over 600 murders this year I think they just had their worst weekend yeah, worst we, yeah, 17, 17. yeah. 17. what do you think about gun control as, as far as that because that's a, a big problem in our community man I, I I don't have the solution to what we need to do with it but we definitely got to get get the guns off the streets as much as possible along with I don't, not only say that, but we also just got to get jobs and opportunities into the into the neighborhoods because when when you got something to do, when you got something productive to do with your life, you're not really sitting there out there trying to do as much dirt. You ain't out there just wasting your time doing unproductive things or even looking to destroy somebody else. We all feel good when we got jobs. Mm -hmm. Like when I get a new movie or album coming out, I feel better about myself. So just having jobs and opportunities will create better economy and, and I think less violence. Well, listen to what you just future. said. You said movies, TV, whatever. That's what these kids want to do. Yeah. They don't want to work at Starbucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, but sometimes you got to do things that you are step you, Yeah, you yeah. got to... And it's a great for other people in the community, too. Like, if you as an adult, then you have kids and they see you working and making a better life for your kids. Yeah. It's like a trickle-down effect, but then people can see you, like, not having... A, nobody... I would feel like... Nobody should want to have to be out in the street doing those things if there's a better alternative. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think people just want to be out in the streets. That's just saying, mm -hmm. like, people don't want to be locked up. Like, I, I, I think sometimes they do, because, you know, with, with music, sometimes it's the glorification of drugs. It's and the, the glorification of guns. And the streets the bring that lifestyle that the entertainers have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Starbucks employees ain't getting these hoes, bro. Right. <laughs> they ain't yeah. driving Benzes. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so, that's you know, it. That's yeah, but, 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 too. but, I mean, I agree that, that at certain points, Sometimes entertainment has been the thing that that made glorified like mm -hmm. the, the street life. But I think once people experience it and you getting shot at and you get shot somebody or you go to jail. Or somebody yeah, in your that, family that is gets like, shot. Or somebody or right there. Did you realize that ain't like the best way? Like and and that's why even when we talk about prison reform, like some of the people that make those mistakes need to be we need to be able to like have some forgiveness and rehabilitation and right. develop them and like you said hopefully it's, it's before it's too late when you got 17 people being shot and i don't just want to act like just, I, i'm saying the number but them that's people that died they yeah. family like right. them kids a lot of them kids was under 20 mm -hmm. and like when you got that man it's just like man we shouldn't we we, we shouldn't be living like that we could do better and i think like 
the opportunities and programs within our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like we, like I know for sure when I played bitty basketball, you know, I had my mother made sure I, she made me go to um to computer class. And I ain't want to. I'm ready to hang out. But all those things helped me do something right. to stay on the, on a, on a, at least a good enough path where you know I was out there hanging out a little bit, but I knew not to go too far over here because I had some to dream about something to achieve. And so. people in the neighborhood respected you for that. Yeah, yeah, they That's definitely cool. honored that. Like, I had some of the wildest homies, and and no matter what, when they see me on my dean, mm-hmm. they like, ah, oh, all right, go ahead, do your thing. You know, I come around when it's when it's time to come around. But I, like I said, I knew I knew how to draw the line. Right. Yeah. Hey, this is my last question. You've always been socially conscious, but now that you're older and more mature, what do you feel like your responsibility is? My responsibility is. To, to speak the words of, of God, to activate and inspire people through the art and through being an activist. My responsibility is to like, as long as there's people that's, that's hurting out there or there's, that, there's inequalities out there, my responsibility is to speak up and be active towards changing that situation. So that's that's my responsibility. Well, pre-order oh. the album right now. Black America, again, is out November 4th. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you for joining Man, us. Thank Simon. y'all for having me. Oh, we good seeing you coming. Love. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, 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 hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning, tune in.